Cardinal Ratzinger, Joseph Ratzinger, Father Joseph, Bishop Joseph, and Cardinal Joseph provides the model for recognize and resist when Ratzinger recognized and resisted Paul VI, which vindicates the trads. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Secula. This is Timothy Flanders with the meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to Pope Benedict Vindicates the Trad. This is a series about traditionalism using Pope Benedict Joseph Ratzinger as the source to provide the principles and the actions regarding various aspects of the Trad critique and resistance to the new Mass which allows us to build the steel man case for traditionalism. So today we'll talk about a more specific instance, but building on what we talked about last time in the principles of the, in the promulgation of the new mass. Before we get into that, I want to ask all of you to please support this apostolate. This is a lay apostolate, which relies on your donations to run and is supported by an online guild. If you join the guild, you get fr more free content. You get free books. We're launching a new book this uh, fall called The Roman Catechism Explained for the Modern World. You can get a free copy of that. Uh, this year has been tough. It's been tough for everybody, but if you can afford any anything at all, $5 a month, $10 a month, that would really help us out. Patreon.com slash Meaning of Catholic. You can also donate Meaning of Catholic.com. Or if you can't afford to be a part of the guild, you can also just join for free. So just contact me at meaningofcatholic.com slash contact. So it is often said that what is needed in the church today is just the new order of mass as promulgated. Now, the, the central aspect of this, which we brought up before, is the two separate issues of the suppression of the old mass on the one hand, and then the new mass in and of itself on the other part of the promulgation of the new mass was the de facto suppression of the old. But today we're going to talk about an address of Paul the six, which provides some of the principles of that he was promulgating. And then we're going to look at an address decades later by Cardinal Ratzinger and how Cardinal Ratzinger sees this very differently because the difficulty which has been introduced is it's not as simple to say, well, we just need a, a Reverend Nov Novus Ordo. We just need a uh, Novus Ordo as promulgated because the promulgation of the Novus Ordo included the suppression of the old mass. So let me talk about that right now. Here's the address from Pope Paul VI. This is the address from November 19, 1969. Here, so this is right when the new mass is about to be promulgated. Here's what Paul VI says. We wish to draw your attention to an event about to occur in the Latin Catholic Church, the introduction of the liturgy of the new rite of the mass. It will become obligatory in Italian diocese from the first Sunday of Advent, which this year started on November 30. The mass will be celebrated in a rather different manner from that in which we have been accustomed to celebrate it in the last four centuries. That is the Council of Trent. Now he says, how could such a change be made? He says, it is due to the will expressed by the ecumenical council held not long ago. And then he quotes Sacrosanctum Concilium, saying that the right should be revised, etc. But then he says this, Paul VI, the reform which is about to be brought into being is therefore a response to an authoritative mandate from the church. It is an act of obedience. It is an act of coherence of the church with herself. It is a step forward for her authentic tradition. It is a demonstration of fidelity and vitality to which we all must give prompt assent. It is not an arbitrary act. It is not a transitory or optional experiment. It is not some dilettante's improvisation. It is a law, end quote. So this sounds very authoritative, and of course it is. It is a, a public promulgation, promulgation of the church's right. And because of that, uh, we hold that it 
would be problem it would be protected by the holy spirit so that the rites themselves in and of themselves are valid they dispense sacramental grace but parts of that promulgation were erroneous in some sense part of that is the suppression of the old mass as Ratzinger said, and we quoted this before in this series, in his milestones, when he first saw that the old mass was being totally suppressed, or at least de facto suppressed, he said that this introduced a breach into the history of the liturgy. But notice what Paul VI is saying. He's saying that this is not an arbitrary act. This is a law. We should all give prompt assent to it. Well, that did not stop Joseph Ratzinger from publicly critiquing this act of Paul VI. He did that, as we said, we did that in the 1970s. He did that, and Paul VI actually listened to him, apparently, and made him a bishop and a cardinal. And so Paul or Joseph Ratzinger provides the model of recognize and resist because he does this publicly. So this is not merely a private correspondence, but he does call the attention of the whole church to this thing publicly. He critiques it publicly, but he does so in a pious manner. And this is what he talked about in Donum Veritatis, where there was a distinction between dissent, which was trying to put, put uh, going to the mass media to put pressure on the church versus speaking publicly. And Ratzinger does say that you can pe speak publicly in the promulgation of Donum Veritatis, in the the uh, it's actually not in the text, but it's actually in the uh, the press conference where he discusses it in the promulgation. So he says that we are not shutting them up in silence, he says. Um, so Joseph Ratzinger publicly critiques this law, which which would give prompt assent, but he does so in this pious manner. So we're trying to sharply distinguish this from when trad, sometimes we go too far and we're we are too harsh or too provocative in the way that we present our criticism or our, our, our pious concern to the faithful or to the church or to the public. Uh, sometimes we go too far and we need to be careful with that, that we, we can always do our best to provoke piety and love towards the hierarchy instead of hatred. Uh, now, Part of that's outside of our control, but we need to try to as much as we can to be careful with that. So Joseph Ratzker apparently did that properly. And because of that, as we've discussed, Paul VI began to really try to put the toothpaste back in the tube, as we say in the States, in the 1970s. And part of that action was sacking Bonini, but part of it was elevating Joseph Ratzker, his, his largest critic besides Lefebvre to the bishop, to the episcopacy, and then the, the cardinalate immediately. And it was through Joseph Ratzinger that it, we're speaking just today about one aspect, which is the suppression of the old right. That aspect was slowly integrated back into the church. At first, they had the in, indult, of course. But then in 1984, under John Paul II, with Cardinal Ratzinger's help, there was the further indult. And then in 1988, with the tragic tragic situation of Lefebvre, there was the, the Ecclesia Dei ad flicta uh, establishing of the FSSP with the canonically regular regularization of the old mass. So it wasn't just merely an indult, but it was fully integrated and um, inserted into the mystical body of Christ as it had always had been, but had not been recognized regularly. Now, Notice, I want to. So, I, what I want to do now is I want to read this address from 1998. Now, this text is very, very good, which we've used before, which is the um, complete works on the liturgy. But there are two addresses which are missing from this collection. And one of them is what I'm going to read from today. And that's the address from 1998, which is the address of Cardinal Ratzker on the 10th anniversary of Ecclesia Day. So, it's 1998. 10 years after the FSSP had been formed, the old right had been canonically regularized in the, in the church. And here's what Cardinal Ratzinger says. And this is what provides the type of principles that we need to approach when Paul VI says everyone must give prompt assent. 
Everyone, this is, a, this is an authoritative act, he says. This is a law. Well, Cardinal Ratzinger, in, in this, this section of the address, which we'll read, he makes reference to a higher law, a law to which the Pope himself is bound. So this is the address of Cardinal Ratzinger, 1998. Um, so if you just search, um, I found this on Una Voce. It's, it's shared in us, uh, various places, but you just search Cardinal Ratzinger's 1998 address, uh, Ecclesia Dei ad Flicta. Uh, he gave this in Rome. And uh, so this is the part I want to read here. Here's Cardinal Ratzinger, quote, It is good to recall here what Cardinal Newman observed, that the church throughout her history has never abolished nor forbidden orthodox liturgical forms, which would be quite alien to the spirit of the church. Now notice what he's saying. This is quite alien to the spirit of the church. In other words, the Pope does not have enough power to do something that is quite alien to the spirit of the church. He may, through bad counsel, which it appears to be the case with Paul VI, he was given bad counsel, and so he thought that that was the best promulgation of Vatican II. Uh, but in fact, this aspect of it was against the spirit of Christ, the, the spirit of the church. Um, Paul VI was not a liturgy man like Ratzker was. He was not an expert on the liturgy. He trusted his own experts for the liturgy, but they deceived him, unfortunately. So let's continue. Cardinal Ratzker again. He says this, quote, an Orthodox liturgy, that is to say, one which expresses the true faith, is never a compilation made according to pragmatic criteria of different ceremonies, handled in a positivistic and arbitrary way, one way today and another day tomorrow. The Orthodox forms, and notice what is being indirectly said there, obviously, is that the promulgation of the, of the new rite was very much that very thing was handled one way today and another day tomorrow. Literally, that was exactly what the case. Continuing Cardinal Ratzinger, quote, the orthodox forms of a rite are living realities born out of the dialogue of love between the church and her Lord. They are expressions of the life of the church in which are distilled the faith, the prayer and the very life of whole generations and which make incarnate in special forms, specific forms, both the action of God and the response of man. Such rites can die if those who have used them in a particular era should disappear, or if the life situation of those same people should change. The authority of the church has the power to define and limit the use of such rites in different historical situations, but she never just purely and simply forbids them, exclamation mark. Notice what he's, what he's saying here directly or indirectly, he's indirectly critiquing Paul VI. So notice notice his piety here. He doesn't directly, it doesn't directly say Paul VI was an error, he was impious, he was going against the spirit of Christ, because that in and of itself would, might provoke impiety of his listeners. So he instead he takes a different route, which is saving the face, he's saving face for Paul VI, but he, he does it in an indirect way and just says in these general principles, the church does not do this. It does not uh, purely and simply forbid them. And then what's interesting here is he, he brings about sort of a, a correction to the promulgation of the council. Because remember when Paul VI was making his promulgation of Novus Ordo, he said that this is the mandate of the council. And he was right, of course. But his own interpretation of that promulgation was the suppression of the right. But Ratzinger introduces a sort of a different promulgation of, of Vatican II. Because then he quotes the council. Then he says, thus the council ordered a reform of the liturgical books, but it did not prohibit the former books. The criterion which the council established is both much larger and more demanding. It invites us all to self-criticism. Um, and this is, as I recall, this was um, the quote from Sacrum Sumptum Comcilium was given by St. John Cantius Church in response to Traditionis Custodis. They quoted Sacrum Sumptum Comcilium, which actually said something to the effect of preserving the rights. And so what's interesting here is this, this provides this model for recognize and resist because Joseph Ratzker, he receives this, this promulgation, but he sees that there are these serious errors with it. 
Now, he does publicly critique Paul VI, but he does so in a very pious manner. When he finally does explicitly correct Paul VI, he does so in a very pious manner. He saves face for Paul VI, doesn't, doesn't explicitly name him, but he does forcefully critique him. And then he reestablishes the authority of the church by reinterpreting that promulgation of the council. So, and this is the way that, Trads, we need to be working our own recognize and resist within this framework. We need to have the piety so that we are still maintaining the piety of our of our listeners and our, our, our followers and the faithful, the piety for the hierarchy, the piety for the magisterium. But there can be reforming the, the reform of the reform, as, as Ratzinger called it. But one aspect of this is restoring that fundamental continuity. As Cardinal Seurat said after Traditionis Custodis, the church's only legitimacy is her consistency and continuity. And as Joseph Rasker said in the Feast of Faith, if you suppress the old right, you're calling your own being into question. So this, I think, gives us this model. So when we think about this forceful language from Paul VI and how he's very forceful with his authoritative pronouncement, you can have a forceful pronouncement but there's always an assumption that you're operating under the higher law of Christ. And that's why Joseph Ratzinger calls attention to the spirit of Christ. It, this aspect of the promulgation is against the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the church. It's a very, very strong condemnation of Paul VI, yet it's done in a very indirect way. So this provides the model for us, and it provides meditation for us as trads that we can really have this this critique and do it piously as much as we can be be careful with what we say even though we're being abused by uh, our 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 shepherds we need to critique and call out the wolf in shepherd's clothing even with forceful language if necessary to protect the sheep but we need to always maintain that same uh piety that same link and, and this framework for recognize and resist. And I think that is what Ratzinger really tries to lay out in Donum Veritatis. So that's all we have today. Once again, thanks for watching. Please become a guild member that helps this postulate continue. We don't run any ads on YouTube, so we don't make any money out of this YouTube video, but we make money and we provide funds for the apostolate through the guild. So patreon.com slash meaning of Catholic. So let's offer up a Hail Mary at the end of this, asking Our Lady to always imbue within us the, this pious spirit so that we can always be sons of the church and speak of her. And if, if there are wicked churchmen, we speak of them as, as best we can to oppose them without opposing the church as such. In nomine Patris, et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tum liaribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mate Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre, Amen. In nomine Patris et Fidi, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. Saint Anthony of the Desert, pray for us. Jesus is King. Amen.